It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 318. This probably isn't for you, by Joshua Fields Milburn of theminimalist.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Feels like it's been a while since I've read from The Minimalist. I tend to save their posts for days when I'm super busy or sick because I've pre-recorded a lot of their material, but not today. Today's a fresh read, a new post from their website. And by the way, if you're new here, this is a podcast, obviously, but to be more specific, This is where I read from some of the best personal development and minimalism blogs out there with author permission. And the minimalists are one of my favorites. They're super friendly guys and great writers. I love their content. And they're actually partnering with a bunch of other minimalist and simple living authors for a course that will take place for all of 2017. You gotta check it out. It's gonna be awesome. You can learn more at oldpodcast.com slash learn. But for now, let's get to the post and start optimizing your life. This Probably Isn't For You by Joshua Fields Milburn of TheMinimalist.com. Bex and I are 15 feet from the bandstand waiting for one of our favorite musicians to take the stage. A sizable crowd is congregated on the dry grass around us and my back hurts from all this standing on unforgiving turf. Beyond the platform, the sun is setting behind clouds that look more like pastel sand dunes than collections of condensed water in the atmosphere. I'm fidgeting slightly in anticipation, hoping I didn't waste my money after witnessing the forgettable band that opened the show. I hope this turns out to be a good concert. Wait, a good concert for whom? Don't get me wrong, the opener wasn't bad. They were well-rehearsed and well-dressed, and they performed with vigor. But there were too many electric guitars, for my taste. The songs were too heavy, for my taste. And the drums were too, um, drummy, for my taste. My taste but most of the crowd wholeheartedly enjoyed the opening band, drummy drums and all. I've attended at least 100 concerts in my lifetime, and most of my fondest memories are of discovering gifted opening acts who surprised me with their music, even though much of the crowd was fidgeting for the headliner, so just because I wasn't entertained by this particular band, that doesn't give me the right to snarkily critique them. No, if other people took pleasure in their set, then that means it simply wasn't for me, and that's okay. The same seems to be true in a broader sense as well. My favorite movies, books, and songs are not objectively good or bad, and yet you may not get the same value from them as I do, and that's okay. If you don't enjoy them, then they probably aren't for you. They're for someone else. So don't waste your time. Let go. Move on. But while you walk away, you need to deprive the rest of the crowd by casting shade on the maker of the thing. Ditto for whatever the minimalists create, our documentary, our TEDx talks, our podcasts, our books, this blog. As long as Ryan and I can look ourselves in the mirror and honestly say, quote, we believe this is exceptional, this piece is absolutely the best we could have done given the resources we have, unquote, then we will give ourselves permission to release our creation to the world, warts and all. Millions of people have found value in our body of work, but if you don't, that's okay, it isn't for everybody. The more you create, the more you will be criticized. And that too is okay, because some criticism is helpful, especially when it's solicited from people you trust, evaluators who help build your building taller, stronger, better. This type of criticism is rare, and that's what makes it precious. Other criticism, however, is a greater reflection of the critic himself. The trolling, the indignation, the tearing down of buildings. These are all neon signs that say, this isn't for me. So next time I get ready to feebly condemn someone's work, perhaps I should ask myself, is this objectively bad or is this just not for me? If it's the former, then I must ask, how can my critique be useful? Because if my feedback is only veiled venting, then I've done nothing but contribute to the recreational outrage I so despise. If it's the latter, then perhaps I'm best served by keeping my mouth shut and looking for something that is, in fact, for me. And next time someone criticizes you, consider this. Your creation probably isn't for that critic, it's for someone else. Suddenly, a spotlight illuminates the stage, the main act mans their instruments, and I'm back in the moment, buoyed by the increasing roar of the crowd. The music starts and is truly outstanding. We're all singing along off-key to every chorus and begging for an encore when the lights go dark. This definitely was for me. The opening act wasn't though, and that's okay. Sometimes we have to wade through the waters of dislike before we arrive at something we love. You just listened to the post titled This Probably Isn't For You by Joshua Fields Milburn of TheMinimalist.com. A nice and short new post from The Minimalist. And again, The Minimalist will be participating in the year-long course on simplicity that's open for registration right now. 
The price is discounted for early birds. It will go up soon. So if this is something you're even remotely interested in, come check it out to learn more. Other authors that I read right here on the podcast will also be teaching this course, and that includes Courtney Carver, Mark and Angel, Colin Wright of Exile Lifestyle, Kate Flanders, among others. And you get to interact with them and be part of an exclusive Facebook group to meet like-minded people if you want. Just come by oldpodcast.com slash learn to learn more. And if you end up being a part of this course through me, they're actually gonna be giving some of the proceeds back to this podcast to help keep it going, which is really awesome. And I'll leave it there for today. I hope you have a great start to your week and I'll see you next time where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, will optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.